Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Rebel Link Escalation Custom Scenarios. I happened to be browsing the workshop pretty recently, and there were a handful of scenarios that were added in that caught my interest, and I thought we'd give at least a handful of them a go. Starting with The New Order by Cyber Jude, based on Wolfenstein, The New Order. Fantastic game, by the way. So in this one, uh, the US and Britain were occupied by the Nazis until parts of the USSR were destroyed in 1947. And will Russia be able to turn back the German invasion of the Ural Mountains? Fantastic question. Unlikely, but you know, fantastic question. Let's give it a go. Scenarios called People's Strike. We let down the Mothelland. On December 12th, 1946, the uh, Germans occupied Moscow and finished off our Red Army near Izhevsk. I don't know how you say that. Anarchy has reigned in our land, but will we be able to defeat the New Order or will we fall under its onslaught? Tune in next time to find out! All right, so what kind of modifiers do we have? These are all custom in some way. Partisans War. After the last stand of Izhevsk in 1947, guerrilla warfare and work behind enemy lines became our tactics. All right, so military units have civil support. Uh, let's see, New Paths for Russia gives important government initiatives. The New Order, no help from other countries. Wunderwaff, okay, buffed enemies, that's gonna be great. Anarchy, unreliable funding. Le Lebenslaum. I don't know how you say any of that in German either. Insurgency can't recruit the locals or the soldiers. Okay. Uh, Luftwaffe bombing campaign. Looks like the German war machine has mastered jets and is carrying out carpet bombing. We have lost air control. That's actually going to make things pretty difficult if the enemy has air control, but all right. And then Blackguard anarchists. Soldiers of the Red Army who join them in a form of bandit state, and they can attack us. So wait, am I now fighting against, like, two other sides simultaneously? Oh, that's gonna be tricky. All right, tell you what, we're gonna place an HQ. How about right here? Might be a little aggressive, but we'll give it a go. There is a fort over here. All right, also smuggling, blah, blah, blah. We need to get rid of all this garbage. There's also an ambush and an oil mine. More garrisons over here. They're damaged, but they should be able to repair themselves over time. So the new paths of Russia gain $10,000. What? Hang on. <laughs> um, how does the funding system work in this? I don't know. I would imagine they're extremely expensive in order to make up for that. Yeah, there we go. Buy $10,000. So basically, what what does this mean? Does this mean that every time we get new funds, it's going to be a pittance, like, tw like three bucks, which means we have to wait around forever to get anything funded? That's surely not how it's going to work. I have no idea. All right, so front of liberation and revolution. In conditions of anarchy, we must regain control of the motherland with an iron fist. Yeah, motorized troops copy enemy weapon technology. War propaganda, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this all seems great. Or free the Cossack lands. Get rid of Bolshevism. Okay, so we can have rogue troops, ability to be paid for many. You know what would be interesting? You know, I bet this is how it's going to work, but we're going to find out in a second. I'll bet you... One of these is like basically what kind of a faction we want to be, and then once selected, it's going to determine what initiatives we have at normal prices everywhere else. That would be interesting. Very interesting. I don't know. Um, all right. Tell you what. We're going to go for... Let's go for the free front of liberation revolution for the heck of it. And sure enough, yep, everything actually is going to be either free or normal prices. That's interesting. So by making it so unbelievably expensive... You can only pick one of the three factions. It guarantees people are going to want to play this three times in order to find out different approaches. That's actually clever. That's actually really clever. Okay, you know what? I was worried at first, but now I totally get it. Uh, let's go ahead and increase that civil support a little bit. We'll go for the loudspeakers. You know, that's all good. Laws of wartime sound great. Fight against corruption sounds good. And that's kind of all the money I've got right now. We do have access to things like restore order and also reorganize the army. I do want to have some military units. Very cheap riflemen divisions. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up because I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up two because I want to get these uh, oil mines and stuff under control and get rid of some of these other things like the smuggler outpost as quick as we can. So let's go ahead and deploy these guys. And sure enough, the military is already active. So that's one of the reasons we have access to this stuff immediately. This is going to be interesting. So we are expecting there to be some sort of a uh, ambush. Uh, we have to remember they have the Air Force, which is going to be difficult. We can go for some partisan units, increasing the strength of soldiers. All right. Frontline training reduces the cost of military initiatives, increases their training time, increases their strength, gives reserve troops, and so on. All right. Nalkograd? I don't know what that says. All right. Increases the cost of military initiatives, increases the strength of soldiers, fortified area, garnisons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's go for the partisan units, get those activated. Um, we should still, in theory, be able to win this fight. I just want these guys to retreat in the right direction. 
and get rid of all this nonsense. These forts hopefully are going to make my life a little bit easier, but the partisan units should be fairly strong, so we're going to go ahead and pick up a couple of those. I'm expecting this to be mostly a militaristic scenario, all right? That would make a lot of sense if that were the case. Let's get units to just kind of create a front line here and prevent these guys from invading, hopefully. I'm a little worried, of course, about the whole insurgency thing, but we'll see. If I can get this, um, these two provinces cleaned up pretty quick, that'll make me feel a lot better so I know I don't have insurgents spawning behind me. I'm also assuming no one can, like, spawn in the river and, like, cross across over here. Sometimes that's a modifier that's hidden from me. We'll see. Let's restore order. Very corrupt to do so, apparently. <laughs> But it's okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So where are the insurgents going to be? They have a lot of connected territory, and if I don't fight against that pretty soon, that could be a pretty serious problem. So let's try to push them back just a little bit. If I can get a front line established in these locations along here, maybe that could keep this all protected? Maybe. I don't know. We could increase strength, but that's going to end up being a lot of corruption risk. What's this? Low pensions, increasing civil support, and decreasing inflation. I don't know if I care about that too much. Militia for security could be a thing. Anti-corruption department. Alternatively, there's going to be things like medicine and stuff. Apparently, this is extremely corrupt too. That's weird, right? Uh, allow access to industrialization, increase civil support, rural outreach, provide some jobs, food stamps, decrease civil support, but it decreases inflation. Uh-huh. Everything is different in this. This is quite interesting to me. Let's go for some school rebuilding and stuff. I don't know. It feels like people are going to want stuff like that. Oh, good. There's tunnels. Where are the other tunnels, I thunder? I don't like tunnels. Tunnels scare me, Harley little bit. All right. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Who cares? Um, Security, I can see being good. Let's go ahead and pick that up. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another round of riflemen. Just because I do think that if maybe, maybe, just maybe, I can get people securing this area, we're going to be in good shape. There might be some insurgents down here. I mean, maybe it makes sense. They did retreat off in this area somewhere. Uh, insurgents just took over the territory I'm actively moving into right now, so that's going to make things a little bit tougher. They reinforce each other. Oh, good. No, oh, this is great. Fantastic. All right. A penal battalion. Criminals and penal soldiers. Mm-hmm. Fast promotion, increasing strength. Yeah, but if I don't find good ways of getting rid of things like the corruption, this is going to be a problem. Let's go ahead and pick up the low uh, pensions. Military police, decrease civil support. Sure. I really need to get things to this anti-corruption department at some point. Like, this corruption is going to hurt me at some point. Uh, a garrison located right here would be ideal if I can do so. And the answer is yes. In fact, I can do so. I just need another dollar. Problem solved. Build the garrison. And this is going to hopefully counteract some of the damage being done. All right, uh, let's see. Militia being set up. We're going to be attacked pretty heavily over here. Holy crud. Uh, I can't send any extra reinforcements over here. This kind of is what it is. This turns out to have been quite the quagmire. Terrible place to set up. I had no idea. All right, we don't want to be here. I need to pull back. Um, crap. Wait, I may have messed this up. Hold on. Can we get over here and save this in time? We're moving really slowly. All right, the answer is no. We lost the fort, though for some reason all the enemies seem to have died. Don't totally know why that happened, but okay. So yeah, this is a trap. There's way too much going on over here. Uh, ambushes, arms, cash, and stuff. I want to get in there, but I'm going to need much stronger units to do it. So we can reduce the cost of the military initiatives and increase the soldier time. Um, I mean, considering we've already got almost all the units I need, do we care about this? I don't think so. Let's pick that one up. We can increase the cost of some of these initiatives. I think logistics could be a good idea. Urban control could be a good idea. Fast promotion, yeah, but we said we want to get things like the anti-corruption department. I'm just trying to make these soldiers a little bit more useful for a moment. All right, so we're safe over here. I mean, what are the odds I can get in here? How strong do I need to make my units to actually win this fight? Because I can keep pulling back, but I'm going to lose a lot of reputation for doing so. It's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm just trying. Let's go for that anti-corruption department I was talking about. It's February 1950. We've already been fighting for a while. Looks like enemies that charge across uh, that get um, defeated actually just die. They don't actually retreat. So that would explain why the insurgents didn't run over in this area. That's fantastic because that does tend to make my life a lot easier. The AI will spawn all these insurgents, charge, die, and then they just don't make any more progress. Yeah, so this is going nowhere. What much, how much more strength can I get? Let's get the fast promotion going. My corruption's gone, by the way. I don't know how that happened. Let's go for some extra strength for my soldiers. Trophy super weapon. Ooh, trophy crews. Study them. Use that against the Germans. I mean, if this is like Wolfenstein and the New Order, right, then, like, the Germans had some unbelievably weird futuristic tech stuff, which was fun and awesome, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I want to capture some of that stuff. Caves discovered in the Ural Mountains. Got it. Well, let's go for the super weapons. Increase their strength. Come on. Tell me sooner or later I actually can defeat this. 
Holy crap, they've got a lot of strength. No, I cannot. <laughs> Right, okay, so this is, a, this is a waste of my time. We're gonna lose some reputation for retreating, but we're gonna go and attack in a different direction then. Lose one, meh, whatever, it's fine. Let's um, try to increase the pay of my soldiers. I want them to stick around. Increasing their strength is only gonna be a good thing for me. These guys, once again, try to retreat, but it failed. Interesting, by the way, that the HQ and the forts do not regenerate their health. That's not typical. Normally, if left alone, they will eventually do that. All right, well, let's go for some more battalions, I guess. A penal battalion will be fine. We'll go ahead and march forward over here and try to get rid of one of these local uh, insurgent strongholds. That's the reason this is impossible to destroy, by the way. It's that dang stronghold increasing their strength. It's like some sort of a modifier. I don't know if it doubles their strength, but it's a lot. Anyway, we should be able to win some of these fights. So these guys are going to go down. Can we win this one with enough reinforcements? The answer is maybe. We need a little bit more first. Um... Significantly increasing their strength with Spetsnaz, that seems good. The urban combat tactics I could see being pretty good. Increasing civil support and everything else, I like that. Let's go for recovery of remote territories. Crud, that does a lot for my support level, whoa! All right, we'll also pick up the mining, leads to use prisoners at work. Uh-huh, okay, they're fed water and a piece of bread, that's it. And then industrialization, getting a whole bunch of jobs and stuff. It's interesting how much is done with every different initiative, right? It's not like it just modifies one tiny little thing. It really does seem to modify a lot of stuff. There's a lot to keep track of here. By the way, I just noticed that not everyone actually died. Some people did get to retreat. So it's just the uh, casualty risk is extremely high for the insurgents when we win a fight over here, which is fine by me. I have no objection. We're going to need to surround this in order to take it down. It's simply going to be too strong. I can tell you that right about now. Can I maybe get in here and get rid of this? And then you go up here, and maybe if we attack this from multiple directions, we can actually take this one down. Maybe, we'll find out. Get the urban combat stuff, that could be good. I'll pick up an extra rifleman, that's fine. Um, 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 we could go for the military police. I mean, decreasing a little bit of civil support doesn't scare me that much. I just want to make sure that the insurgents don't become a problem later on. We'll get ourselves the urban attachment, I guess, right here. Fine, I guess I could have done that down here now that I think about it, but we're fine. Actually, mm, this is urban, isn't it? It is. Okay, hold up. We're going to pull you here, move you here, move you here, and move you... We'll say right here. But I want to have the urban specialist in this area because I can see that actually being useful since we know that that is the right area. There is no subtle pressure as far as I'm aware. We had no idea how that works. So we're going to go ahead and do the counter strike. We're going to have to spend money every time that pops up now, which is going to be annoying. Oh, gosh dang it. Don't run in over here. Chase this guy down. Don't let him flee. I want him dead. I want him dead. All right, hang on. What else we got? What else we got? We can go for nothing there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the industrialization. That'll lead to highways. I think extra movement is always a good thing. We are struggling to fight this one over here. We are able to defeat this area, though, finally. All right, that urban specialist has a huge buff to him. I like that. All right, you get down over here. We're going to try to surround the city and take it down right now. So let's just go for the mass surround against the Germans, I guess. I'm going to place a quick little garrison right here because it's going to affect a lot of key areas. The minefields are going to get destroyed, and then we are going to move you down over here. And with these guys fully surrounded and nowhere to run once these guys have deployed, I know... Oh, wait, we lost a unit. Dang it. All right, fun recruitment of a replacement. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No, nobody saw that. We're totally okay. Get in here and take this guy out. Anything else for the military? I mean, more riflemen, I guess, is fun, but totally unnecessary. We do not need this many units. Let's just go ahead and wait until these guys arrive, see how much damage they're able to do. Looks like once the reinforcements are cut off from the center, these areas fall very, very quickly. And I missed an event. We'll just go ahead and counter-strike. And at that point, there's nothing else to do but just sort of sit back and win. Hooray! Oh, this is Moscow. I didn't even notice that. Okay, I kind of like that this is actually a reworked, like, semi-historical map. I mean, there's obviously limitations, but, like, that's kind of a cool idea. And there we go. One thing I did notice that's a little bit weird in this scenario is uh, inflation doesn't actually seem to be a thing, right? That's kind of weird. Anyway, I'm just going to jump into another different version of the faction. I just want to see what some of the differences are, right? So we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing. Place the HQ in this area. Let's choose... How about the green movement? What does that lead to... Drusina, uh, let's see, maintain order and control areas, increasing civil support with uh, security that people likes. Let the churches do their work. Right, the Orthodox Church, interesting, okay. In the 20s and 30s, the destruction of churches and shrines was carried out in the USSR. Many priests end up in the gulag, that is historically true. Now we can give them permission to work, which gives our people hope. Uh, okay, rural community, sure, more outreach there, fight against corruption, blah, blah, blah. I mean, so far, this seems a little bit like a good guy route to me. Let's go ahead and reorganize the army. We need to get some units together, uh, of course. We can try to do the exact same thing as before. 
And we have different options for the military. Okay, artillery support, partisan recon squads, AK-47s, and request military assistance. Does take some reputation, but it reduces costs, or rather, no, sorry, it increases the cost of military initiatives, gives us a lot of extra strength. Really? Now see, this is interesting to me, all right? This is just interesting. I like that there's actually like three scenarios wrapped up into one here. Oh, even the agricultural stuff is different. So this gives us things like minor roads. That wasn't an option with the other faction. It was different over here. I don't remember what it was exactly, but it was different. Dude, this is interesting. I, I, I really like the creativity behind this scenario and what is trying to be accomplished here. Now, I bet you there are some different challenges, like maybe in this particular scenario we have less reputation to work with because we can be less authoritarian in some way or something. I don't know. Interesting, though. Yaroslav. I remember that territory. Okay, hang on. These are actually, like, based off... Yeah, there's, like, Ryazan down there and stuff. Yeah, this is all Nizhny Novgorod. This is all based off of actual places I know in Russia based on my uh, time playing things like EU4. Fascinating. Ooh, and we get a tank. Beautiful. All right, let's run in there and see if we can do some serious damage in that direction. Uh, you get less units overall with this particular faction, though, so it is a slightly different approach to the same kinds of problems. Less government initiatives over here as well. And no infrastructure and industrialization. Dude, I, I don't know. I, I, am I the only one who thinks this is intriguing? There we go, easy enough. All right, let me just jump into this one more time and let's see what's gonna end up happening with the other faction. So that was the Cossacks, right. So we can lead Ataman, give raid initiatives. Also, we can allow the churches to do their work as well. Carry out a raid, give money. I mean, I like money. Wait, we can just carry out raids and just straight out get cash so we can have a, wow, okay. Is there any reason not to just go ahead and pick those up immediately? I can't really think of anything. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, we do not get normal soldiers. We have to get Cossack troops. Very cheap, powerful. They fight for money. Oh, this is gonna be just like with like the Warlord and stuff. Not to mention we get an armored train. We get armored cars, more troops. Dude, okay, this is interesting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just go straight out full military, man. Full military, bruh. Admittedly, training all these coalition troops is probably not smart, but I mean, like, everything trains so fast, it doesn't matter. Um, we don't know what's over here, so let's go ahead and do this. We'll pick you up, we'll pick you up, we'll go over here, we'll go over here, and I can attach a tank if I feel like I need to. This is gonna be a really fast turnaround scenario, I think. Let's get the logistics so everyone moves even faster. Come on, the Cossacks are supposed to be speedy! Oh my gosh, and we deployed this tank and we obliterated this so fast. <laughs> right. The Cossacks might end up being a little bit overpowered, if I'm honest. Maybe, just a little bit. And the tanks arrive, and Moscow immediately gets cleared out. Wow, alright, yeah. So, this was what we call Lightning War. <laughs> um, and as long as we're careful with our tanks and we're not antagonizing the locals too much, it should all stabilize extremely quickly because there are no insurgents on the map to make things unstable. Of course, when the bill comes due, yeah, it does cost a lot of money in order to keep these guys around, but, like, by the time that I, I'm done, like, I've already got so much money generating at this point, like, who even cares? I, I don't, I don't need anything else. Like, even if I wanted to, I literally can't buy anything else. I, I finish off with the Cossacks extremely quickly. In fact, this campaign was more about sitting around and waiting for Moscow to stabilize than literally anything else. So that was a much faster run. Yeah, this is creative. I like this scenario a lot. Big thumbs up from me. I like the idea behind this, and I kind of think that more people ought to give that one a go. Though some are obviously a bit more balanced than others, at the end of the day, the Cossacks OP is frick. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.